Hey guys, it's James Chai here. I am just going to do a, a short little um, Friday night uh, live broadcast and just going to go over a couple of topics. After I do the broadcast, uh, hopefully I can save this, this video and then I'm going to delete it off of Facebook and then post it up onto my YouTube so I'm not um, taking up a whole bunch of room uh, on, my, on my Facebook posts all the time here. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this down to 20 minutes or less and like write down the comments that um, it's going to just depend uh, on the timeline that I have, but I'm going to um, talk about intuition and why dogs paw at you. And so the two things that uh, I think are kind of important. Um, first thing is about intuition. And a few people who have contacted me after watching my videos and so forth um, have said, you know, again, like I was saying the other day, is how many... Uh, you know, what did I learn? How did I figure this all out? And how did I end up working with dogs that have attacked dozens of people, you know, over a dozen people? And, you know, without any training whatsoever, how did I do all this? And how did I, uh, how did I end up uh, just being able to work with the predatorial dogs that are 150 pounds and so forth? Dogs, you know, that people say to kill. Um, it's just an aspect of using intuition. So intuition is something that we all have. Every single one of us has intuition inside of us. There's no doubt about it. There's no denying that we have intuition. And where is this intuition coming from? It comes from the fact that we, our instinct, we've evolved from. And that's really what it is. Intuition, instinct, it's taken a million years for us to, to get to where we are, where our intuition is, what we're using. And like I was saying the other day, um, you know, you get people who say, how can I learn what you're doing, James? Uh, you know, you're, you're obviously, you know, more skilled than me and blah, 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 but it's not true. And, and I don't want that to be a point of saying that I'm, uh, I'm trying to devalue any statements that people are saying. I just want people to realize that what I'm doing, you can do too. And it's just because we need to stop overthinking things and look at the simplicity of working with dogs. When it comes to dogs that have dysfunctions, treat training... As I've said before, it's a difficult thing, and that treat training will cause the dogs to not cognitively or emotionally mature. The dog will be stunted. They will be, what I say, retarded in their ability to mature cognitively and emotionally. And how do dogs communicate with each other in the wild, uh, the wolves and the canines? They're communicating with each other just by connecting, by you know, reading each other's signs and so forth like that. They're using their Intuition, using their instinct to discover what the other dogs are doing, which is why, again, I say that when it comes to treat training, it goes back to Pavlov back in 1887, 122 years ago, and it doesn't really have a basis in reality because food is not used as a communication device, nor is it used as a reward fiat. So it's the intuition that we have, and again, it's the same thing where I say, um, you know, if you know somebody well enough, you can predict what they're going to say. And you can finish their sentences. So that's what I talk about using your intuition. So just follow through with what you're doing and go from there. Um, the one thing I want to talk about, because somebody had mentioned about it um, um, in some other posts uh, of mine, is why do dogs paw at us? Right? They got their, their foot up, they come to us, they start pawing at us, and people want to know why is that happening. And so, you know, I do a Google search on it because I have my own theories, right? And I never, I, I try not to read other reports and stuff like that because a lot of times it's just not usually accurate so the stuff that i did read about why dogs paw at you well okay you know they want to treat um they are just doing it because it's a learned behavior and so forth so the truth is it is a learned behavior but where does that learned behavior come from so when the dog is a puppy they start playing with each other they start pawing at each other they start pawing at pieces of wood they start pretending that they're uh they're going after prey that aspect, right? And then we have prey drive, play drive, P-L-A-Y. So prey drive, play drive, and predatorial drive. And um, I just want to kind of separate all that because all those different types of drive all require engagement with a, another party, another animal, another human being, a toy, whatever. And those dogs are, uh, you know, actually I want to bring up another point is when those dogs are actually engaged in play and prey drive, especially when the dogs are by themselves, that's your dog using their imagination. That's your dog thinking and fantasizing and play 
making up play by themselves by playing with a stick and they're throwing up in the air and they're running around back and forth. That's your dog's sentience. That's your dog's emotional content to be playing by themselves. Just like the child in at home starts drawing cartoons and crayoning and everything. That's the same thing that our dogs are doing is that they're making play happen. They're making fantasy. Thank you so much, Britt. Uh, I really appreciate this. And, um, you know, uh, I just want to say Britt Sanko, who runs Dog Owners of the Lower Mainland. Uh, I I've known her and her husband and uh, Murphy. I've never met your kids yet. Uh, you're too, you know, wow, they're so cute all the time. I always see them. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Um, uh, but the, the thing is that um, Britt knew my beloved Lincoln, uh, you know, way back when. And, and so she's just been an amazing supporter. So I want to say thank you so much, Britt. Uh, so getting back to the dog's play drive, prey drive, and predatorial drive. The dogs that I work with uh, usually have predatorial drive, and then they start to develop more into somewhat of a play drive, which then evolves into prey drive because then they're no longer under the pressure of having to perform and to protect themselves. Last night I talked about the dog's hackles raising and how they can actually, due to the significant trauma, is suppress their hackles from raising and that's why a lot of times people say the dog is unpredictable etc etc and that's a different topic and like i said i want to keep this under 20 minutes and uh anybody who knows me knows i talk forever uh just because i have so much stuff that i've of, have observed um so going back uh to the to the play drive the dogs are doing and they're engaging with the paws and they're playing around so where does the pawing come from the pawing comes from the fact that it is a actual cognizant, a deliberate act by your dog to engage with you in play. Your dog is actually thinking in their head, I feel lonely, I want to hug, I want to have attention, I'm going to go to my human that I love and that loves me back to be engaged. So it's not just one thing whether your dog comes up to you and starts nosing you and says, hey, you know what, to start petting me. It's more so when your dog comes up to you and starts to paw at you. That is an actual conscious effort on your dog to say, I'm lonely. Now, where does this all come from, right? How did I observe this? Well, because I have to, right? Um, but where does this all come from? It's because of the, the dogs observing what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So for those of you who are in a relationship, what do you do with your husband? What do you do with your wife? What do you do with your girlfriend, your boyfriend? You hold their hands. You go up and you give them a hug. You hold their hands. Your dog sees that. They know that's an engagement of physical action. Dependency, codependency. They see the love in between. And then that goes into the jealousy aspect and the envy parts of dogs, which is another topic as well. But your dog sees you touching hands with another human being. Your dog sees you taking things off the, off the table, out of the drawers and giving it to the, your your wife, your boyfriend, your husband. Your dog sees this happening, so they realize this is as scientists, you know, incorrectly state as mimicking. Your dog sees this action as a way of engaging with another person, with another party. So they see that as an this is what we do. Is we start to paw at you, just like a baby will imitate and mimic our thing. That the baby will mimic. Us laughing, the baby will mimic us making funny faces. Your dog having the same type of mentality, similar to that of a three year old child. Your dog will also learn how to paw at you. That is a very conscious effort by your dog to engage with you. So that means your dog has settings. That means your dog is deliberately thinking that I'm lonely and I need some comfort. <laughs> and that's Sammy getting angry at the other two fighting here, play fighting. Um, but that is your dog deliberately making an effort to engage. So your dog can be laying down on, on the couch somewhere and they'll see us, you know, when, you know, I'm over at my table here in the kitchen all the time and the dog, some, some lay in the kitchen, some lay in the living room. As you can see, they're running around fighting and play fighting and all that stuff. Um, but they'll be, for example, um, like, and I'll get, I'll use William again. Uh, William will be laying on the couch and when he feels lonely, He'll come up to me and he wants attention and he'll start to paw at me. He'll literally put his hand up to paw at me. And if you notice that once you start engaging with your dog when they paw at you, if you put your hand up and you let go of their paw, they'll reach for you again. 
they'll keep pawing at you. And they don't paw at you in an incessant, undisciplined way. You just watch the way your dog paws at you. And you'll see that they're pawing at you with the deliberate action. Your dog is actually pawing at you to engage you, to explain to you that they feel lonely. The other reason why your dog knows that is because of, without a doubt, when you give them their food, you're holding your hand. Your hand is bringing love to them. When you are giving them treats, when you're playing with the ball, your dog sees you with your hands engaged at all times. So that's what your dog understands as a way of communicating with you. So that's why you don't have to use treats and so forth working with a dysfunctional dog. You just literally have to use your hand while you're engaging with your dog. And as I have always done is I just put my hand on, uh, on, on one of my dogs and I don't move my hand and I just keep it still there. So that's how dogs engage. That's why dogs paw at you. It is an actual desire to engage with you. It is a codependent behavior. And it's a beautiful codependent behavior because it's the most endearing thing. It's like you sitting with your 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 um your uh, girlfriend, I'm sorry, uh, your boyfriend. It's like you sitting there with with somebody that you love on the couch and they reach over and they grab your hand. So that's the same contact context that's the same analogy is that they're lonely they want to feel affection and they're physically engaging with you to do so so the next time your dog comes up and paws at you instead of thinking that they want to treat give your dog a hug give your dog some attention give your dog your hand so that he can put or she can put her paw in your palm and engage with you and when they engage with you it helps them feel that they're loved. It validates them as an individual, as a dog, as a life. It validates them to let them know that you yourself understand that they need help. Um, the other thing that I was going to say about was about uh, engaging with, um, hey Colleen, uh, was engaging uh, with the video that I have here on my cover, uh, cover video on my Facebook page which is uh, read the German Shepherd, but I'll get that I'll get that to another time. Um, and actually, read the German Shepherd is owned by one of the top uh, one of the top criminal uh, lawyers in British Columbia. So it was kind of cool that he asked for me to help him um, with his dog Red, who was quite reactive. So uh, there's that. Um, I'm not sure how much time I have here, but uh, does anybody have a video of their dog's behavior that you want to upload? And if you want to upload that, you know, a one-minute video, I'd be happy to do a live evaluation and uh, go through over some behavioral traits for your dog. Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Uh, okay, so it'll have to be some other time um, if that's the case. But again, if you have any questions about it, let me know in regards to the pawing. And if you have any ideas or comments about future uh, topics to go over, would love to be able to discuss it or else I'll just end up doing my own thing anyways. Uh, again, this video will be deleted uh, from my Facebook and then I'll post it onto my YouTube and share that back onto, um, onto uh, Facebook. All right. So thank you so much, everybody. Enjoy yourself a lovely Friday. Uh, you know, it's my third broadcast and obviously I'm feeling a little bit better. Uh, this is uh, another broadcast uh, for all of us out there who's, who are too shy to speak publicly. And um, at the same time, I, I really hope that we can all do some kindness, uh, an act of kindness for, uh, for somebody else. Oh, it won't upload. Um, do you want to... Oh, shoot. Do you want to... Oh, okay. Maybe, you know... Brett, um, I'm sorry about that. I, I don't know why I won't let you upload. Um, you know what? Maybe what we can do is we can upload it next time and then I'll just watch it while we're doing it live. Like, you know, something like that. Um... I'll, I'll figure that out, Britt. I'll, 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 I'll PM you and we'll figure out how to do it. And I, and I want to get the video live. Or maybe, you know what, can you, uh, Britt, actually, can you post it to your own Facebook? And then I can go to your Facebook and then I can just, you know, look at it And if you want to do that. Uh, you'd love to hear about a hand or a dog that has been attacked on a leash in the past and now has confidence issues. Oh, okay. You know how you deal with a dog like that? Uh, sorry, guys, I'm just going to put my finger in front of it. Uh, how to deal with a dog that's been attacked, right? So it depends on the dog's insecurity level, their level of self-esteem, uh, the level of confidence, and that comes from us as well on the human side of things. If our dog, thank you, if our dog gets attacked, it's because they got attacked, right? And there's nothing we can do. Actually, I was talking to some type whose dog has been attacked three times in, in nine years by dogs.
ones that were leash and uh, you know unfortunately that's not cool uh, but um, so uh, okay so when it, when it comes to that part of it is say for example you're walking your dog and your dog was attacked right you're walking and from behind you know there's a lot of road noise you didn't here, this other dog comes up and starts attacking your dog. What's going to end up happening is your dog's going to expect you to protect them right off the bat. So they got engaged. Someone's biting them. And your dog is attacking them or fighting or biting them. We immediately have to protect them, and we normally do, right? We see this dog being attacked immediately. We're, we're jumping in and we're you know pulling our dog away and we're trying to trying to go after to separate them. And our first gut reaction is to separate our dog from the attacking dog. So what does that teach our dog that we're pulling away from that dog? That that dog that attacked our dog is more dangerous. And then it causes your dog to be afraid because it's like, well, then if you're pulling me away from that dog, means you can't protect us from that dog either. And then that creates a whole host of issues with regards to self-esteem, confidence, betrayal, trust issues, and so forth like that. And then it's a matter of you working with your dog to let them know that any future interactions with any other dog, you're going to step in and interrupt that before that happens. Even if your dog doesn't think there's an issue, you've got to step in and interrupt it. Um, so that's kind of a brief description of what happens. And it, it comes to an aspect of betrayal. Like the same thing, like I said yesterday, I think about if you're walking down the street and you're with some friends and actually, no, I, I think I talked to somebody else about this, but if you're walking down the street and uh, with a bunch of friends and someone comes up and just sucker punches you in the head and starts fighting with you and your two friends just stand there watching you get beat up. You're never going to trust your two friends ever again to protect you for anything. Your, your trust is betrayed. So that's the same thing it is with your dog. When they get attacked by another dog and you pull them away and don't go after the dog that's attacking your dog, they feel betrayed and then they can't trust you. Then it's a matter, a very long matter of trying to re-engage and get the two dogs, uh, to get your dog to be able to associate with other dogs again. And so that's a tough thing to do. And it depends on what type of dysfunctions are created by that behavior. If your dog is an insecure dog to begin with, and insecure is a generalized term, it goes in deeper in regards to low self-esteem, regards to self-confidence, regards to insecurity, regards to unsecurity, regards to just a whole bunch of stuff, right? Because here's the other thing is, uh, dogs are not cookie cutters. They're not cut out there, oh, the dog is a dog, right? And I always, always get people saying, my dog this, my dog that, the dog this, the dog that, it, he, she, it. Your dog has a name. And so it's because we've learned to look at dogs as property, right? So again, start looking at what types of protections your dog needs, what type of uh, dependencies that they have, all these things that happen when they get attacked and then you can figure out how to, to address it. But I'll go over that in the future. Uh, Stephen Elliott, who, who, who behaves out in the UK, uh, had commented, and I, I'm always talking about Stephen because I think he's just a cool guy. Um, he was asking about why and how I read a dog's evaluation uh, by watching the way their eyes blink and the way they lick their face left, right, straight, forward, uh, how their ears are positioned, how their hackles, whether or not they rise, uh, which way the body turns and all that stuff. So I'll try to get that uh, in a future, um, uh, a future broadcast when I have someone's video to, to look at and go from there. But um, yeah, so anyhow, that's pretty well all it is. I just wanted to kind of keep it under 20 minutes and I hopefully I kept it that way. And if you have any ideas, feel free to comment and ask me in the future and then we will be able to go from there. Thank you, everybody. Have an amazing Friday night. Uh, I've got sessions this weekend, so I will try to find some time and maybe do another broadcast. I would love to be able to do this every single night, and I will try to do it every single night. And um, again, please find uh, the opportunity to do something kind for someone, um, stranger or, or a friend. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing to do sometimes in this world that we live in where uh, we are only looking out for our immediate circle of people. And I don't mean, you know, helping a homeless person, which is also a good thing, but I don't mean just helping a homeless person. But, you know, maybe sometimes when we're talking to somebody and they start to irritate us, maybe just, you know, just, you know, say nothing and just realize that maybe they just kind of that kind of background that they come from. And, um, you know, again, we need to uh, change the way our world exists. And, um, you know, with a lot of the things that have been happening, especially um, 
um, you know, politically speaking, uh, we are in, a, in quite a bit of turmoil and, you know, our society can kind of make an adjustment. All right, so there's me proselytizing uh, as well. But uh, again, thank you so much. And we will all, um, we will all meet again tomorrow night, hopefully, if I'm not too tired. All right, take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.